Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. This file is being recorded for the January 2021 edition of Socialism for All. And this is an audiobook of The Materialist Basis of Education by Lena Morrow Lewis. Martha Lena Morrow Lewis, commonly known by her middle name Lena, lived from 1868 to 1950. She was an American orator, political organizer, journalist, newspaper editor, who was a top female leader of the Socialist Party of America. She started her activism career in the 1890s after graduating from Monmouth College. She started out as a suffragette working to get women the right to vote, and then in 1902 joined the Socialist Party of America and the broader struggle for socialism. So let's get into the audiobook. This is again the materialist basis of education. It was originally printed in The Masses, March 1912, transcribed by Sally Ryan for Marxists.org in 2002. Thanks, as usual, to Marxists.org, the Marxists' Internet Archive, for hosting this file and thousands of others for free. Among the many contributions the capitalist system has made to the progress of the race, one of the most valuable was the necessity of educating the members of the working class. No right or privilege or opportunity is given a lower or under class unless that right or opportunity makes for the benefit and interest of the upper or dominant class. Two hundred years ago, one could find but few working men who could read or write. Education was the privilege of the upper class only. It was not necessary for the serf in the field to have a trained mind in order to plow a straight furrow. The skill to swing a scythe or sickle required no mental training or education. But the introduction and development of machinery and the use of steam and electricity necessitated a different type of worker from the unlettered, untutored serf in the field or the woman at the spinning wheel. To transform the crude ore into a fine steel rail required new skill. To assemble all the various elements together into a mighty engine called for the trained and educated workman. To operate an engine demanded the skilled engineer. In short, the new industrial processes which the capitalist system gave the world necessitated the education and mental training of the workers in order that they might be fit and efficient wealth producers. Capitalism, therefore, created the economic or material reasons for the need of the great mass of the workers to be educated. It, quote, democratized education. While economic and material benefits have accrued to the master class through the education of the workers, while large profits were only possible through a trained and skilled laboring class, yet in this very thing which makes for the triumph of the master class financially, we see a potent and powerful factor in bringing about the political and industrial supremacy of the working class. Knowledge is power. Only as the workers have knowledge and intelligence can they solve the problem of their own political and industrial freedom. The capitalist masters have educated the workers to their advantage today, but for their undoing tomorrow. The thing that makes for the triumph of capitalism ultimately makes for its own downfall. Education of the workers for the benefit of the capitalist class means gain and profit only for the few, the upper class of today. Education of the workers for the benefit of the working class means gain and profit for the working class and ultimately for the whole human race. That which has served the capitalist class will someday serve the working class. The trained minds that create profits for the masters of today will create wealth for the producers to enjoy tomorrow. The future victories of the working class lie not so much in their numbers, the workers have always been in the vast majority, but in the knowledge they possess and the ability to intelligently organize and act together on the political and economic fields. Let us ever remember that knowledge is power. And that's the end of the audiobook. This was just a short little article or editorial that she wrote for the masses. But it hits on some really key ideas. Um, first of all, for anyone new to Marxism, the title of this article, The Materialist Basis of Education, means uh, we take an approach called historical materialism, meaning that 
uh, the economy and the economic system drives is the driving force of history. And so everything else in society pretty much has to reorganize itself constantly around the technology because that is how we create the goods and services that make survival possible. And so she's highlighting the idea here that uh, because capitalism you know, requires workers to be skilled, it requires the capitalists who want to keep their system running to educate us workers and to uh, you know, institute uh, educational systems which will produce workers capable of actually operating the economy. But, you know, as she points out and uh, is a general, you know, Marxist point, this is how capitalism makes itself obsolete is by creating uh, people who can operate and manage the economy without capitalists. We don't need them anymore. The boss needs us. We don't need the boss. Uh, you know, of course, in the last few decades, particularly in the U.S., um, but to some extent across the capitalist West, there's been this consensus on the part of the ruling class called neoliberalism, which is basically to roll back uh, a lot of the public programs, defund, deregulate, etc., privatize. Um, and part of this has included an attack on education. The capitalists are trying to preserve their existence, uh, even at the expense of the overall society, by denying us uh, information, knowledge, you know, just need, needed things. Um, and it's throwing the society into a deeper crisis. They're basically taking the crisis of capitalism and just spreading it out across the society as much as possible. Whereas, you know, if we rose up, ended capitalism, instituted socialism, you know, harmonized or resolved the contradictions within capitalism that create war, poverty, inequality, civil unrest, etc. Um, I mean, that's really our task today as workers is to end capitalism before it ends us. And, you know, if you want to see what that looks like, neoliberalism, the last 40 years, you know, late 70s into the, the Reagan administration, uh, they've been cutting everything they can. I mean, and you hear libertarians in particular uh, with the attacks on education and anti-intellectualism, and um, it's a terrible thing that already has cost the last couple of generations a lot of opportunities. We got to stop it before it goes any further. And with that, I will call it a video. What did you think? Leave a comment below and more videos coming soon. And that's the video. Thanks to our current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen or just support us financially, you can go to patreon.com slash socialism for all and sign up for a monthly donation. You can also follow us at facebook.com slash socialism, the number for all. Used to have a page at F-O-R all and it got throttled to death by Zuck. Here on YouTube, please click the like button, subscribe button, and the notifications bell. Please leave a comment if you can, and please share our video wherever you're online, your Twitter feed, your Discord servers, Reddit subs, etc. All of that helps more people to see this content, whether it's in the YouTube algorithm or just posting it on other sites. All of that's helpful. All of you out there supporting and promoting this content makes it all go that much more smoothly. We need to end capitalism, normalize talking about socialism today, and uh, it's really kind of our only hope for a better tomorrow. Thanks for all you do, and we will catch you in the next video.